Hey guys, welcome back to Homesteading Off The Grid. Today we are going to talk about the world's best kindling for fire starting and this is scientifically proven. Kindling is a pretty simple concept. You need a little tiny piece of wood, a little bit bigger than tinder but smaller than fuel to get your fire really roaring before you put the big pieces or the fuel on, right? Well it's amazing how complex people can make something as simple as kindling. But to take all of your questions you've asked about kindling, seriously, excuse me, I dropped one of my crayons. I actually did two months worth of compiled research on kindling. I wrote a thesis on it, and here it's, we are now, I'm, re, I'm defending my thesis here before you because I believe I have confirmed the world's best kindling for starting fires, okay? So this is a thesis by Crazy Lake of Homesteading Off the Grid. Two months worth of compiled research uh, explained. Now, guys, when I started searching, I found all these crazy videos on YouTube. I found all these crazy blog articles all over the internet. It showed ways to chop your little firewood sideways and angles, um, all these nifty gadgets, uh, the different types of woods, just everything. Guys, it's like we've talked before when planting trees about how they make simple processes like baking cakes more complex because of the complex mind of the human being especially the western mind especially the american mind thinking things have to be more complicated than possible it doesn't so here once and for final and scientifically we're proving what is the world's best kindling we used many different test subjects we used dried and seasoned hardwood deciduous hardwoods in this case it's red oak we experimented with semi-dried green and fully dried pine because of the resin a lot of folks think the resin in pine makes it an excellent candidate for the world's best kindling we used the gimmicks okay what i'm going to refer to as the gimmicks um, this one is actually called a 5k fire starter and this is representative of all the gimmicks you can get online i invented this one so i can name this one without having to worry about a lawsuit 5K Fire Starter, the K stand for Crazy Kevin's Crackling Kindling Crayons, okay? Um, it's a fire starter I invented myself using pine needles with their resin, some dryer lint at times, and of course, crayons. And then we're simply going to discuss dried and seasoned deciduous hardwood sticks, and in this case, that of the yellow tulip poplar, which we have in abundance, okay? Now, science, science, okay? We're going to defend our thesis here heavily upon the uh, the beliefs of Occam's razor and at the end we're going to verify our test results using Einstein's theory of relativity so through science we prove that you cannot unprove the results of this test okay now first with Occam's razor in layman terms most people know Occam's razor as being the simplest explanation is usually the correct explanation that's actually a misrepresentation of English Franciscan friar William of Occam's original Occam's theory. Uh, he was a scholastic, Sir, Sir William of Occam was a scholastic philosopher and a theologian who actually did not come up with Occam's razor. It's attributed to him because he used it so much in his experiments when he gave his test results and the term Occam's razor actually didn't even show up until more than 300 years after his death in 1347. So there's a lot of history on Occam's razor, but the, the, the actuality, this is the way Sir William of, Occ, of Occam worded Occam's razor. Simpler theories are preferable to more complex theories because they are more testable. And so that's what we applied here. So basically what he said 700 years before Teddy Roosevelt had to do more with decision making than it did scientific facts. Teddy Roosevelt said, at time of decision, the best decision you can make is the right decision. The second best decision you can make is the wrong decision, and the worst decision you can make is no decision. Guys, when you're trying to figure out which of the gazillion different types of kindling is the best for you, stick to what Teddy Roosevelt said. Do not suffer from what we call analysis paralysis, which is what Occam's razor really tried to help scientists overcome. Make a decision. Go with the most simple, okay? That's too much information on Occam's razor, but that's what we did here. So. Let's get right to the test results. Here's what we found. <clears throat> Seasoned, dried, uh, deciduous hardwoods split up like kindling, typical kindling. Does it work great? Yes. Uh, we don't have to worry about any of the resins such as is in pine clogging up your flue. 
Um, so is it the world's best? No. Why? Because of the effort involved with splitting it and then also the time you have to wait in it to dry, okay? Now, let's move over to pine kindling. Simple pine cut up and simple kindling sticks. Um, you don't have to wait for it to dry like you do with deciduous hardwood kindling because of the fact it has resin in it, which is flammable. You can burn it green, semi-green, or dry. So does this make it the best? No, this is not the world's best kindling. And it's because of the fact that it does have the resin and that resin can cause buildup in your flue and it can, it can become a fire hazard. So, we are so advanced with our technologies and all these things we've discovered and we're so smart these days. So, the world's best kindling fire starter has got to be those gimmicks you can buy on any website that's, oh, we've combined all these products and we've come up with this, the 5K fire starter, crazy Kevin's crackling kindling candle, okay? They come by many, many different names. And the way it works basically is, in this instance, we've used pine needles, which has resin, but as you know, if you light it, it'll burn quickly. But we used the wax from our crayons to slow the burning process down. So this way, it lights easily because of the resin, but it stays lit for a long time because the wax from the crayon slows it down. So basically what we did here, folks, is we reinvented the candle, okay? It's a gimmick, it's a gimmick, okay? Now, just like Occam didn't come up with Occam's razor, I didn't come up with that. I did not invent the candle. It's been attributed to me because at times I had, or I'm sorry, I did not invent the crayon but I've been attributed credit for inventing the crayon because at times I make the crayon trending on YouTube. Okay, so that's just a gimmick. Now, I'm going to tell you finally, here's the grand finale, the world's best kindling to start a fire and it's been scientifically proven. And it is simply seasoned dried sticks. Here's why, okay? And in our case, where we live in Central Virginia, it happens to be yellow tulip poplars because we have them in abundance, okay? Tulips or tulip poplar trees shed their smaller limbs very prodigiously, uh, like a, an animal that sheds its fur or a chicken that goes through a molt. So oftentimes these smaller limbs or sticks get caught in the tops of the trees and they set up there for a year or more, seasoning in the sun, drying out in the sun, and then they come to the ground in a stiff wind or when a windstorm comes through. And by the time they hit the ground, they're ready to easily crack, they're perfectly dry, they're perfectly seasoned, okay? Um, maples, oaks, they don't shed in quite the abundance as poplar, but if you can, out in your area where you live, get sticks of maple, oak, uh, any deciduous hardwood, ash, walnut, they work just as great dry. Now, why are they best? Why are they the best over the gimmicks you can buy that basically has lint from your dryer, maybe some cotton because it's dry, and they put some wax on it to slow the burning? Why is it better than that? Why is it better than pine with its resin, its natural resin? And why is it better than the efforts of you know, going through the typical standard cut kindling? Here's why. If we compare it here, no effort. You don't have to cut it. You don't have to wait for it to dry. Mother Nature dries it herself while it's up in the tree, and all you have to do is snap it. Okay, compared to the pine, no resin. Ugh, these take time to make, and if you buy them pre-made, you know, one of my competitor's brands, you have to spend money. This is free. Now, here's where Einstein's theory of relativity comes in to prove my point. You say to me, oh, but I live in the Pacific Northwest and I'm already using pine kindling because we don't have deciduous hardwoods in my area. Do I make a change? In this case, no because it's going to be more difficult for you to come up with yellow tulip poplar sticks if you live in Oregon or parts of Washington where you're just surrounded by pines. However, what I would recommend you do is you switch to cedar. There's a lot of cedar where you live, and when it dries, it burns just the same and nice and hot as dried yellow tulip poplar here on the East Coast, and you don't have to worry about the resin with the pine. Now, if you say to me, well, I live on the East Coast like you, and I've been using pine or these other methods, should I switch to poplar? Yes. Or should I switch to maple or oak sticks? Yes. Why? Because it, it works better, less effort, you don't have to wait for it to dry, and all you gotta do is go out and pick the stuff up. So, for the last two months, since we've been burning in our wood stove, and I keep dropping my crayons, it's okay, I have this one for backup, we keep, we have been testing the various methods, we have put them to the test, 
and, and we have finally gathered our results together and we can now proclaim through scientific research that the world's best kindling for starting fires simply is the age-old method they've used for thousands of years. It's a nice dried stick. Thanks for joining us for another very simple video here at Homesteading Off The Grid, where once again, through science, we've proven the common sense rules. Make sure to check back with us for more next time, and we'll see you then.